Hello and good morning. Good you morning. Are tuned to AAB Headline News. It's Monday, March the 30th. This month is almost gone. Almost gone. One almost more day. Almost gone. Hard to believe. That's right. We are Pastors Mike and Arnett Owen uh, here at uh, Turning Point Mission Center. And uh, we just want to thank you for joining us. Uh, we're looking forward. Uh, to today's podcast. Amen. Have Indeed a lot of are. good information to yes. share. Yes, has been a busy weekend and a yes. lot of things happen. Yes, yes. Well, as we always do, uh, Pastor Arnett, we're going to go ahead and start with prayer. Yes. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, once again, you have spared our lives and thank we are you, thankful. Lord. We thank you for our health and strength and we pray for those that are sick, those that are going through. We pray, Father, that you will have mercy upon us all. Let us be our brother's keeper and do unto others as you would have us to do unto them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank amen. you, Lord. Amen. Well, today we want to just say happy Monday, and we'll kick off our uh, headline news, which is giving you the update stats on the coronavirus epidemic. Ep- pandemic. Um, we have uh, 143,055 confirmed cases in the United States. Mm-hmm. That's uh, up by 553 uh, today. So uh, the numbers continue to tick up. We had a higher jump on yesterday. Uh, I think it was 15,000. But uh, nevertheless, the numbers still ticking up. And globally, uh, we have 730,929 confirmed cases, and that's uh, an increase of 15,491 uh, today. So we see this coronavirus pandemic is continuing to spread like wildfire, and we have to do our part to work together to contain it and to get to, on top of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's uh, befitting that we start with an article um, from the CDC, um, and uh, it's talking about um, how to deal with the pandemic. Uh, This is um, a Twitter uh, health and uh, safety tips from official sources. Uh, Tedros, um, well, I just, I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, but he says, I stand in solidarity with health, health workers fighting COVID-19. I will repeat once again, let's do our part. Wash, rub your hands frequently, cover your cough with your elbow or a tissue, keep physical distance, stay home when asked to, and uh, together we can uh, help uh curb this uh, deadly disease. Uh, The U.S. Surgeon General says today is Doctor's Day. Uh, Thanks to my colleagues and friends who even before COVID-19 sacrificed much and often put their patients' needs before their own, I promise to keep fighting to shine a light on your needs, your sacrifices, and your heroism. Please thank a doctor today. And that is uh, a noble and honorable thing to do. Uh, They are on the front line Mm -hmm. uh, doing the best that they can to help uh, the people that have already contracted the disease and trying to help others not to get it. So we want to uh, just say thank you to our doctors today. And all healthcare workers. I thought it was interesting, too, how the Surgeon General said, I promise to keep fighting to shine light on your needs. Right. I think he's talking to his boss, which is the president, uh, just to continue to make that because I think based on his action, he really does not uh, appreciate the sacrifice that they are making mm-hmm. and understand their need. You have governors and all these uh, officials from different states pleading and begging with uh, the federal government for help. And it's downplayed. It, it's really almost falling on death ear. So the Surgeon General, I think he just... Uh, because he's a physician himself, he just reaches out to uh, other physicians, letting them know that 
I, I'm going to do my part and use my influence and my power to shed light upon your knee and to keep the fight going. Okay. I want to say hello to uh, Brother Jeff. Uh, he has joined us. I believe he's joining us from uh, Jackson, Mississippi. We appreciate you uh, joining the conversation. Uh, here's another uh, uh, tweet from Tedros. He says, another heartbreaking video showing the sacrifice health workers are making to keep us safe from the coronavirus. Let's support them. Wash, rub your hands frequently, cover your cough with your elbow or a tissue, keep physical distance. When asked to stay at home together, we can defeat this invisible enemy. And, wow. uh, you know, the, the uh, echo is uh, over and over, uh, wash your hands, uh, cover your cough and your elbow or tissue, keep physical distance and stay home when you're asked to. So uh, that that is something that uh, we uh, cannot overemphasize. Amen. That's right. Um, we have to realize that this thing is serious and, and every day different people are uh, being added to the list. Uh, either being affected or even losing their lives. Uh, the battle is, is definitely being waged. And right now, we have not turned the curve on getting the victory of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. I, we just got to keep fighting. Let's go over to an article from NBC News, uh, I think, which is uh, important. Uh, Trump extends social distancing guidelines as governors warn of shortages. Uh, the article starts out by saying President Donald Trump announced Sunday that he's extending his administration's guidelines on social distancing during the COVID-19 outbreak until April 30th. And uh, what happened is, of course, that, uh, you know, he was saying that he wanted to have everything up and running by Easter, which is April the 12th. But then uh, and, and that was despite... Uh, all the, you know, all of the medical advice that he was getting that uh, we would not be ready for that. Uh, but he uh, has rolled it back now to April 30th. Also on Sunday, the governors of Michigan and Louisiana warned of a lack of resources to respond to the crisis and said that shortages of ventilators and protective equipment could overwhelm hospitals as soon as this week. Mm. Uh, you know, we are, we're, fat, we're quickly getting to that critical stage where uh, the supply and demand have uh, reached their breaking point. And uh, we don't know what we're going to do beyond that. I know that there are some industries that are retrofitting and and uh, working now to try to provide additional um, ventilators, but we hadn't got to that point where they are available yet. Those, right. And didn't I read somewhere where um, many of the ventilators that the federal government <laughs> had provided didn't actually work? That's what we read. We did read that uh, our Governor Cuomo in New York said that they did not work, but he was rolling up his sleeve and he got his people working to try to uh, repair them repair so they them. will work, but no, yes. they, they sent hundreds of ventilators did not work. So let me get this right. The federal government drug its feet on even making these uh, ventilators available. And then when they got them, they were defective. That's the word. That's what it was reported. Mm. We also read a report where there was a, uh, uh, a company in uh, California that uh, had made some ventilators that were more like portable and they were like a hundred dollars a pop and they could uh didn't really require electricity but they used uh some type of device to pump oxygen in and this doctor out there in the in uh california was trying to get this kind of give them the uh permission because he had gotten a whole group he's a veteran he had gotten mm -hmm. a group of people ready to to be able to retrofit them and do it pretty quickly in a matter of two weeks. Uh, and this company is negotiating with the state of Illinois to sell them rather than 
give them to this uh, particular group of uh, veteran other. It was a whole group that had been formed that had the expertise to make them. They needed permission from this company to use them. So uh, I read that this week. I don't remember where the article came from, but uh, it was, uh, I think, came from uh, MSNBC News. But anyway, you know, you got yeah. profit over over uh, people concerned, and that's why the president hesitant to use that uh, order he has put in place, you know, to come wartime uh, order to compel the uh, private sector to make these things and just reimburse them for uh, mm -hmm. their supplies rather than letting them be able to market and make a big profit. And he's saying they are getting cooperation from the uh, corporate America, so they don't, he does not have to uh, use that uh, power. Even though he, uh, you know, put the order there, but he never executed it. Mm -hmm. I have an article I want to share, and this comes from ABC News. It says, pastor who claimed COVID-19 hysterica was plot against Trump dies from virus. And this is an article that was uh, published uh, last week. It said, religious ignorant kills. London Sparrowland, a Virginia pastor who claimed the mass uh, hysterical around the coronavirus pandemic was part of a media plot against Trump has died from the virus. Mm -hmm. uh, this pastor uh, never got a chance to say goodbye to his family. The 60-year-old 60, 60 father and husband from Virginia died to complications from COVID-19 on Wednesday morning in North Carolina. While on the way home from a mission trip, Sparland collapsed and was taken to a hospital in Concord, North Carolina. He was eventually put on a ventilator as his condition worsened. According to the report, uh, he was 66 years old, was a Christian musician evangelist, fell ill while on a missionary trip to New Orleans with his wife. Um, let's see. Uh, let's follow. On Facebook page, Farland shared a misleading uh, memos attempting to minimize COVID-19 comparing the virus to swine flu and suggesting that the response to the coronavirus pandemic was media created mass hysterical to damage Trump. So, and then the point I'm making is you have people who are still not taking it serious, not believing it, and they're in a position to influence other people. How many other people that may have uh, been exposed because they believe it was a media hype and not really real. It was some right. design to and hurt when you the have family. people in positions of responsibility, uh, especially in the church, it makes it uh, you know that more uh, that much more appalling that rather than looking out for the safety and well-being of the flock that God has appointed them to. Uh, they instead get caught up in political hype and uh, they project that more so than they do the safety and well-being of the people that are counting on them for the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, as pastors and ministers and leaders in uh, the body of Christ, we are responsible we are. for the, the sheep that we minister to. And uh, you know, and it does not just stop in in, in in preaching the word of God. We have right. to care about the whole person. The whole person. That means that we're not only uh, to be concerned about their spiritual well-being, but also their physical, physical, mental, uh, emotional, financial, the whole gamut. Uh, we are to uh, make sure that we are helping our congregation to make wise decisions. And that we don't put them in uh, harm's way. That is so important that we do not put them in harm's way because I, I do know some churches that are still having services in spite of the uh, guidelines. And and uh, so when, you, when you're doing that, you may be okay, but what about other people in your congregation that contract this, this uh, virus and they may not be successful? They may not... Uh, uh, live. Uh, you, you got older people and you got other people underlying health conditions. So when you have a a church gathering or anything like that, you're you're uh, putting your 
congregation and the people in Humps Way. Mm -hmm. uh, we read about uh, a church there in um, Arkansas that had over 30 people uh, contracted, uh, po tested positive. They had a church function uh, with 700 people there. And they uh, and they are still testing, so there are only thirty some have been named so far, wow. but the number is still testing. There are also schools that are uh, still open. University, university, that's right. And yeah. and they have students that are being mm -hmm. tested positive mm -hmm. as well. So we really got to do our part. We all have to be in this together um, because uh, if we don't, you may be fine, but the next person may not be. That's right. That's right. I want to say uh, hello and welcome to uh, Jared and also Jess B and me for joining us here on uh, AAB Headline News. We are Pastors Mike and Arnett Owen. I want to talk about another topic for just a few minutes, just, just a few minutes, and that is gatherings at funerals. Yes. Now, yes. We, we understand that this pandemic has caused an uptick, a great surge in the number of deaths that are taking place across the world community. Right. But uh, health authorities are advising us and civil authorities as well that we limit the number of people that attend funerals. Right. And that uh, that be kept down to no more than 10 people mm -hmm. and just do a graveside service rather than trying to ha have a big official gathering uh, for a funeral. And I'm going to say this, and a lot of people might disagree with me, but you need to check out your Bible on this. Uh, those that are dead don't even know that you're at the funeral. That's right. You know, and, uh, you know, our hearts, I'm not saying this with insensitivity to the families that are bereaved, but I want to let you know that your loved one is now asleep and they don't have any knowledge of anything that you're doing. I have seen people go into funerals and they are all over the casket and they're trying to get in the casket. They are just uh, so overwhelmed with grief and weeping, but that person doesn't know what you're doing and, and, and even that you're there. So why would you go and expose yourself in a great number of people that could very well be carrying your death warrant uh, because they have been infected with this disease and pass it on to you. Well, I think the funeral more or less is for the person that are grieving. It's all about their emotion. Mm -hmm. um, when death comes, everybody deal with death differently, but uh, we have to be sensible. And like you said, because that person is dead, it's, it's all about you at that point. They know not anything. So we do need to be mindful of not only ourselves, but the harm we may be imposed to other family members and people in general. So I, I do know some funeral homes are doing service, but they, what they're doing, they are uh, only letting 10 people come in to view at a time. And then they are not having service, a funeral, official funeral like they mm -hmm. normally have. They have mm -hmm. the graveside with limited to 10. And I think that's being responsible. Yes. I do know of a situation uh, and I won't call the, the place name, but it's a, it's a county where several uh, pastors attended a funeral of one of their loved ones, uh, one of the clergy, and five of those pastors have been uh, tested positive with that coronavirus, and uh, one of them have died. Two of them are still in the hospital fighting for their life, along with one of the first lady. So this thing is serious. It, it, it's, it's not uh, safe. And uh, it's also unsafe for the funeral on directors. That's right. Uh, so we have to be careful about that. That's right. And God says that we are to present ourselves living sacrifices unto him. That's right. And that we don't even own these bodies. And that's why we have to take care of them. That's right. And, and so that we can be a fit service unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have to take every precaution to, to maintain this body temple mm -hmm. that God has given us. I'm going to get off of that now. All right. But, uh, I, I just, you know, wanted to share that with our listeners because uh, you might be one that has actually experienced a death in your family uh, and uh, you still need to practice good health principles, mm -hmm. uh, even in your bereavement and sorrow. Yes. And our hearts are with you because we know the pain of death. 
but we have to also trust God and he will help you make it through and you will be able to still say you goodbye without exposing yourself Amen. to the coronavirus or others as Amen. well. Let's okay. go right ahead. Go right ahead. <laughs> this is an article from CNN. It said, exclusive. Justice Department reviews stocks trades by lawmakers after coronavirus briefing. Uh, the Justice Department has started to probe a series of stock transactions made by lawmakers ahead of a sharp market downturn steaming from the spread of coronavirus, according to two people familiar with the matter. The inquiry, which is still in its early stages and being done in cooperation, I mean, coordination with the Securities and Exchange Commission, has so far included outreach from the FBI to at least one lawmaker, Senator Richard Burr, seeking the information about the trade, according to one of the sources. And of course, uh, this senator was head of the Intelligence Committee, so he was getting daily briefing on mm -hmm. what is happening with coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And he used that inside information to make trade decisions, sell off his stocks and, right. and do other things. I was about to just say, you know, this is another prime example of the greed uh, that we have uh, in high places. Mm -hmm. as And, and it's all over the, the, the map, but this is one particular instance where uh, uh, greed kicked in and rather than acting on behalf of the people of this nation, uh, this uh, congressman was more concerned about preserving his own pot mm -hmm. uh, and uh, capitalizing on insider information uh, that uh, you know was uh, you know uh, that that was going for. Yeah, he's a Republican uh, senator, and he heads the Senate Intelligence Committee. And the article goes on says that. Um, he previously said that he relied on public news reports as he decided to sell between six hundred twenty-eight thousand to one point seven million dollars in stock on February the thirteenth. But um, the, it's been found that it wasn't uh, public knowledge; it was the information that was being briefed in those private briefings for the, the, the senators. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, that's what we kind of want to share about that. And and he wasn't the only one. There were several others, uh, uh, senators that did the same thing. They used inside information to uh, invest in uh, technology stock because that's certainly a place that's going to be an uptick with all the things that they are having to work remotely and not being able to work in your normal uh, way of doing things. So the company that can support uh, virtual work is really is where you need to be putting your money right now. Right, right. Um, there's an article by Ed Mazza um, in Huffington Post. Uh, the headline says, John Oliver unloads on right-wing media's death cult over coronavirus. Uh, John Oliver called out right-wing po uh, politicians and media figures who in recent days have pushed to reopen businesses even if that means older Americans have to die due to their exposure to the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, we are being forced to confront some of the strangest, darkest implications of a national mindset in which market worship, I'm talking about the stock market, uh, threatens to become a death cult. Uh, he had another explicit in there, but I won't say that word. Uh, the host of HBO's Last Week Tonight said on Sunday, Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick said he's willing to put his own survival on the line to reopen the economy. Mm -hmm. And if that's the exchange, I'm all in, he told T Tucker Carlson on Fox News adding there's there are lots of grandparents who agree you know i i tell you one thing i'm not one of I'm, those grandparents that's right we you are know, not <laughs> you, when you think about the economy and you think about the one percenters uh that are still sitting high looking good 
and there is a rush to try to get Wall Street back to where it should be. So they won't uh, continue to lose money. Right. And see, when they talk about boosting the economy, they're not talking about us, po folk. Mm -hmm. They're not talking about, see, if they wanted to boost the economy, they would do a better job with dealing with those that are middle class and, and lower class uh, and no class. Uh, individuals that are really struggling. But if you have noticed, they talk one game about uh, uh, building up the economy. They use buzzwords. Right. <laughs> but at the same time, they try to take away benefits and uh, take away opportunities for the poor so that they can better uh, provide for those that already have. Uh, and this... Uh, uh, article goes on to say that uh, Brett Hume also on Fox News called the point of view entirely reasonable. Uh, and, and that's what's happening in right wing minute, uh, media. They are taking an approach to this. First of all, that it's a hoax. Secondly, we need to protect our money rather than lives. And thirdly, uh, those that have, let them keep and those that have not uh, too bad for you. Unfortunately, a large part of the uh, Fox News media are older Americans. Mm -hmm. So uh, perhaps they're saying we've lived our lives and we, we don't mind dying. But what about all the other who have not had a chance to live their lives? What about all the other who are still fighting to try to live the American dream? My view is that uh, if we fight to get the victory over the coronavirus pandemic, then we can fight to build the country back again. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you put the cart before the horse, that's mm -hmm. going to be kind of asinine to do that. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to say, okay, let's open up business. Let's uh, do the little tricker. And everybody that understands this problem is saying we must uh, be aggressive about testing because the testing helps us to know who uh, have and who do not. And then once the person have, have uh, had this virus and and been healed from it, they have an immune built up. And then we can begin to work on getting those out. But right now, it's too many unknown. You don't know who have the virus and who do not have the virus. So you begin to still let people go back to work and go back social as usual. You really uh, are probably going to compound the problem. This is like a person go and get get uh, treatment, and then they expose again. They have not gotten over that virus. This, would that reduce again or whatever case may be? There's just right. so many things right. about it that is unknown. But the expert is saying we don't need to be doing that because it's too dangerous. I, I'd like to continue in this article also. Uh, right wing host Glenn Beck said people over 50 should go back to work while younger people stay home to avoid the virus. Is, is this not genocide? Is this not genocide? Is this not an attempt or a design by the right wingers to genocide or to the take? Older See, let, me, let me tell you, let me tell you now, we've been talking about, uh, uh, you know, the theories of, um, oh, my mind is going blank right now, but uh, we're talking about attempts to uh, you know, do things that will affect masses of people, and this is certain one, <laughs> right? Uh, so what it, it seems to me like it's an uh, attempt to do away with a segment of our population, and 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 here's the underlying um, problem, and that is that the senior citizens they feel are a weight or burden upon our economy mm. uh, uh, because those individuals are on Medicare and they're, they're having to do things to s help sustain their lives in their elder years. So why not just let this disease wipe them out? Mm. Uh, conspiracy, that's what I was trying to think of. Uh, conspiracy to help them to lessen the burden mm. on um, Medicare and all of that by letting the population of our society die out. But uh, even, you know, even and, with that theory, letting the older one go back to work and the young one still stay at home, you're uh -huh. still looking at exposure. 
Because right. some of the older ones I, I have younger people around so, uh, them. Guess what happens when the older ones come back home? They affect the younger ones. That's right. But, you know, the problem is how can you be so hard-hearted? Greed. That, yeah, greed. Yeah. Greed. That, that it just keeps popping up, greed. doesn't it? Yeah. And everywhere, everywhere. And see, these individuals that are uh, propagating these kinds of ideas, uh, you know, they are going to be in a position themselves. You know. Well, it's I don't think it's gonna really change until some of them begin to experience the person, until some of them begin be tested positive. And then that's when you'll see the change. Uh, uh Glenn Glenn Beck went on to say, even if we all get sick, I'd rather die than kill the country. Well, if everybody in the country is dead, what kind of country <laughs> do you have? Well, you know what? We got people though, they got these emergency emergency bumpers now uh, -huh. uh they put away uh food supplies yeah. that will uh, last for years and years uh some people have the money to do that uh -huh. and they are planning on being the survivors when everybody else dies out mm -hmm. you know but the, i want you to know when you come out of that bunker when you come out of that place that you have set aside for your own safety uh you're gonna find a very cruel and harsh reality that lies ahead of you because you're going to find that the, the mechanisms and the support systems that you need are not there because common folk have been killed and died and uh, they are not available now to provide the services that you're you depend on. To. Hello, somebody. Well, and another point in that, even if they were able to go into the bunk and do the thing, that's assuming that God is going to let them live. See, God still has the last say so in this. So you can do all these things and try to hide. But when your time is up, that's it. So, you know, let's be sensible about this thing. Let's be fair about this. Let's do what is best for everybody. I know our time is up. I want to just share a quick thing. It says, this is by NPR. It's a fact check. U.S. lags on testing despite Trump's claim. Oh, we, we already know that. We already know that. Yeah, but I want to share a few little tips out here. It says, U.S. has ramped up testing, but still lags on other countries like Italy and South Korea when it comes to testing on a per capita basis. Mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. has performed 894,000 tests as of Saturday, according to uh, the Assistant Secretary of the Health and Human Services, uh, who's leading the testing effort. The U.S. population is around 327 million, which means about one in 36 people are getting tested in comparison to Italy, whose population is 60 million, and they have done approximately 454,000 tests, which means one in one, uh, every 133 people are tested, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's about three times more per capita than we're doing. Mm -hmm. So testing is so important. And, and and they're striving to try to ramp up to get about 50 tests in a day, but that's not happening yet either. Well, here's another co conspiracy and cover up that's taking place. You see, if you don't test, then you don't you don't have uh, increased numbers to report that have the virus. So it's all about making sure for political reasons that we keep those numbers down that are reported so that we can uh, make false claims that this virus is not as deadly and has not infected as many people that have actually been infected. So don't test is what this administration is doing so that uh, he can keep his numbers looking good or better than they really are because he's looking at November when people go to the polls. He wants people <laughs> to say that he did a good job, but he's covered up all of these people that right, are really sick right. and have really died from this virus. We are out of time, but I want to read uh, some comments that uh, one of our listeners uh, has shared. And I appreciate you, Jared, for being with us and your input. He says, I agree with you at the upper corporate level, but there are still aspects of business at the local level that can still operate in a safe way. And I do agree with you on that, Jared. Gar carry out for a lot of restaurant restaurants have been booming in our area, but they are they are careful in how they operate and uh and refuse okay and, and refuse uh exposure. Uh, and 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 I agree with you. There is a safe and responsible way sure. that uh you know some businesses 
can operate. But there are also other business that require congregation of people's mm-hmm. coming together, mm-hmm. you know, in order to carry those business. And that's what we have to uh, safeguard yeah, against. The that, that's business. what we have to safeguard against. And uh, he says, Beck, uh, Beck is a radical. And I do agree with you on that. Glenn Beck is a radical and he's a radical in going in the wrong direction. Our time is up. Uh, we certainly appreciate everybody uh, that has tuned in today. Uh, we got a lot coming up this week. Uh, it's Monday. It's Monday, March the 30th. And we just want to thank y'all for being with us. Uh, and we trust that you will join us each day this week, Monday through Friday uh, at 8 o'clock a.m. for uh, AAB Headline News. We are Pastors Mike and Arnett Owen. Uh, we have a, a different way of looking at things. Hey, Amen. Uh, you might agree and you might not. You're welcome to do that. But we uh, all, when it comes down to it, we're all in this boat together. Mm-hmm. We're in this boat together. Well, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share these news updates. And we pray, most important, for your wisdom, Lord, that you uh, lead and guide and direct our path. We pray also for all those who have been afflicted by this uh, disease. We pray for their healing. We pray for your protection for those who have not. And we pray for comfort for those who have lost loved ones. And we pray for our leaders. Give them wisdom, Lord. Help them make wise decisions. And, and guide us as we embark on this brand new week. Lord, keep us safe and keep us healthy. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And as we part, as always, we say do unto, unto others as you will have them to, to do unto you. you. Enjoy God's presence and embrace his love. God bless you.